Hello, welcome pen friends. Let's talk about envelopes, okay? Um, I'll tell you what I did. Uh, as some of you know, I am on a, a depth year and a mindful spending year. And what that means to me is I need to use what I have to, to the best that of my ability. And if it doesn't work, find a new home for it. So I've gone through all my envelopes and I put them in this basket. <clears throat> and I'm kind of studying them, trying to figure out what I like about them, what I don't. And uh, I thought I'd take you along with my thought process. <laughs> this may become a ramble. I'm pretty sure it will because I have a lot of thoughts going around about it. But I thought the conversation was really one that would be fun to have. It is February uh, 2020 as I'm filming this. And I'm um, and we we're past the halfway point. We're, we're two-thirds through with uh, Inco Rimo, which is International Correspondence Writing Month. And um, it's a ra cold, rainy day here in Texas. I'm working at my desk. We decided to forfeit plans of uh, that we did have and do them tomorrow because it's going to be um, at least dry. It'll be cold tomorrow, but it'll be dry. So uh, welcome and um, let's get started. What I wanted to do was kind of go through each envelope and I even have uh, my four preferred papers so I could kind of study and, and look and see how why it is that some of these are my favorites and some I, I they just irritate me and I'm trying to use them up that kind of thing but uh, I'll move the basket aside and we'll change the camera just a little and then I'll be right back <clears throat> there okay so my first envelope is one that I don't use quite as much as I used to but when I first started pen paling this the little number eight uh security envelopes like this that come in a, in a box. Um, you can find them everywhere, it, not just Mead, but other companies make them too. It, generally right around a dollar, they're not very expensive. Um, I used to use these all the time when I started because really I only wrote with, uh, <laughs> it was so funny, because I'd be writing on Tamoy River paper and I would kind of do a, a three-fold or some sort of a fold to get it in here. And I have my little address um, stickers for my return address. So this was my favorite because there was never any show through of the writing with this envelope. They were, I always had lots of them because I just keep them on. I, I was used to keeping them on hand. It's one of the envelopes I always had on hand before I started back in fountain pens. So... Um, what I don't like now about it so much is that they're just so thin, you know, which it sometimes can be to, to my advantage if it's going uh, overseas and I'm trying to keep it under an ounce. But it doesn't feel strong enough to hold everything I may want to put in. But I still like it if it's going to be a letter and, and that's all and there's not going to be anything, you know, either lumpy, bumpy or yeah, extra in it. So that's the first one. And I still think that's a really good uh, option, especially with the Tamoy River paper or any of the A5 type paper, you know, with this one, you still have to fold it more than once to get it in here, but it, it's really, really good. Okay, so there's that one. And I'm sure we're going to get quite a pile up after a while. Um, let's go to my, the next one, even though it's not really in order, which is an envelope that I also had on hand all the time before I started back in fountain pens, which is just the standard number 10 size. So it's, this is a notebook piece of paper out of a CVS caliber. So, you know, you'd, you'd do your two fold or it'd be three sections of your letter. So um, I don't like these either because these feel real flimsy. And especially if you get Tamoy River paper in there, um, probably because I write on both sides of mine. I have pen pals who use these and I think they're perfectly wonderful to use and they're very inexpensive. Mine was a huge box that I paid a couple of dollars for but there was 150 in it. It was really inexpensive and I, I don't really know. Usually I would get mead so I was surprised to see this. I cut the box because it was already coming apart anyway. So just typical number 10 but nice security so if you do write on both sides of your letter you're not having um, what you wrote showing right through or whatever so that's nice gee i guess that's my favorite word today <laughs> um okay so we got these two uh let's see what's next i'm just going to keep grabbing it's going to get a little out of order oh okay this next one 
is a very interesting one that I can't seem to figure out what the size is. I have a bunch of envelope size charts that I was looking at because I went online to see what I could find. Let's see, I got three of them, I think, that are really neat. They, um, yeah, here's a, a neat one too, this one. Some of them have been removed by the people that put them up, so that was too bad because there, there was one where you could lay the envelope on it and you would know it would, it would say in the middle if it was an A5 or a whatever, um, but they've been removed. I guess the copyright was not respected. But these at least give the dimensions and talk about whether they're commercial and they give the envelope size. Of course, it's in inches, so some folks are using centimeters and um, millimeters, so that's not gonna help you. But I did find that if you go ahead and Google envelope size chart, you can find a lot of neat resources. But I couldn't find this one. This one measured uh, four and an eighth approximately by six and uh, three quarters. Let me see what that, maybe this is an envelope that didn't originate here in the US. I wouldn't be surprised because I could write on it with Noodler's Lexington Gray. So we're looking at um, 10 and a half centimeters or 105 millimeters by, let's see what we got here, 172 millimeters or 17 and a quarter <laughs> centimeters. So anyway, what I discovered was I walked into the thrift store one day and I found these and they're weird. They had this funny little emblem on the back uh, and it had some paper which was with it, the whole thing, a whole bunch of envelopes and a whole great big stack of paper. The paper was terrible. I couldn't write, I, everything bled through the paper. So I was gonna throw these away <laughs> or recycle them. And uh, when I realized, wait a minute, let me just see. But the envelopes turned out to be totally different than the paper. Um, so Noodler's Lexington Gray and a Twisby Go with a fine nib writes on here. And I've been using this for Inco Rimo. And I know also a J.R. Bond Amethyst de Laurel. That's an Alami fine nib. I know that if you threw that in a pan of water, you'd still be able to read it. So that's another pen I was able to use to, um, to address it. So this is nice because actually with just one fold, I could get my preferred paper in there. Uh, I've been mostly writing with this, with the Tamoy River. I'm gonna go, this will be a, you know, a test page and uh, Probably I'll use it for ink splatter after. So just one fold puts my Tamoy River in there. Now the drawback on this envelope was that you could see through. So I had to kind of plan things out or I had to get a like a card, maybe a, a little blank index card or something to put because I don't like everything to show through. I, I don't, I mean, you know, privacy wise, I think it's best if it doesn't. So that's been a really interesting envelope. These are all that I have left, but it was like 77 cents for the envelopes and the paper. But the uh, paper was totally not fountain pen friendly. So, uh-oh, I'm throwing things. <laughs> this subject does get me really interested because I write pen pal letters all the time. So next up is a pen and gear. This is a Walmart envelope. Let's see, I thought I had, yeah, I have one colored one. So what happened with this, this is an A6 size, pen and gear. And I don't like the white because of that same reason. The white um, shows through, whatever's in there like drastically shows through. Let's see if we can, <laughs> um, see how you can, well, it's a little bit different with the camera, but you can see everything that's written there. So I didn't, that part I didn't like, but I do love this size. This is, this is really nice for, you know, folding these uh, these typical letter t writing tablets. This is a CBS caliber tablet. You can just, um, and I have a Scholar tablet and a Rhodia tablet, you know, other paper like that. So it makes it really nice once you get it addressed, you're just looking at one fold. I don't know why I'm so hung up on folds, but, but I am anyway. Um, so they, I'm using up these, so that's another one. <laughs> Okay, what's next? Okay, here's one that was sort of a, not a very, hmm, okay, let me just explain. A2 size is what it came out to on the chart. Um, wait a minute, that says something different. Uh-oh, 
<laughs> oh, quarter. No, it is an A2. The reason that I was confused is because I wrote myself a note that I could quarter these pages, this being a typical notebook page. I can just go ahead and fold it in half like that and it'll go right in there. So it's perfect size, but I haven't been crazy about the brown because I'm always worried, I guess, are they gonna be able to read it? And this was written with a G2, Pilot G2, and I do have a pen case with some uh, typical pens I use to address these. We'll look at that a little while later. I guess I'm always a little bit worried, is the post office gonna be able to read it? Do I have to go over it two or three times? But that showed up really well, but I don't normally use a G2, and I'll show you in a bit what I do use. Okay, so, but I need to use these up because this is what I'm trying to do is uh, not, you know, go order more envelopes while I still have all these. So, here's another envelope that's just random. Um, comes with six uh, peel and stick envelopes. I like these because this is... Uh, you know, we could get five by seven stuff in there. You don't have to worry about the clasp because it isn't, it's a gummed, you know, just a peel and stick. And if I'm not horribly mistaken, and I don't think I am, I believe I got these at the Dollar Tree. And these are, are pricey envelopes, unless you go like to a stationery store like Office Depot and get a whole bunch, you can uh, get them, but in Walmart or Dollar Tree, places that sell you like a little pack for a dollar, that's a really good, I think that's a good deal. Uh, a lot of times I'm sending my mother like some paperwork and and of course just a folded in half regular uh, typed paper or paper like this that is the um, composition or um, filler paper fits right in there. So that, these have been, I don't like to run out of those. So there's those, oh my, the stack is gonna be really high here. Let's keep pushing it aside. Okay, what's next? I got some oddballs too. Uh, might as well look at those too. Um, another source for envelopes in my house is when I get done with Christmas cards, I sometimes have, <laughs> I don't know why, but sometimes I have an odd envelope or several envelopes left. And these are, um, Oh gosh, uh, maybe it'll come to me, the, the company that make Lang, it's Lang, and they're really nice linen paper. Just about any pen that will write on these really nicely, even a ballpoint, and you know, you can, it just feels nice and it looks nice, and it's got the nice um, little kitty on it. You know, and that's not too Christmassy, that, that looks like it could go pretty much any time. So I'm using up those kind of envelopes. Okay, and then the other day in the thrift store, <laughs> I found these little banded envelopes. Let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten. They banded them by the ten for 15 cents, and I thought I'd just try them. Turns out those are number nine envelopes. Le Noodler's Lexington Gray feathered on it, but the Paper Made Ink Joy ballpoint. Of course, it's kind of smeared a little. Let's see if you can see that you know, that you get a little glopping. So I've got other options. Um, let's see. I've got this, the Mach 3 pens have been really nice for envelopes. And I've done a test where I put them in water and, and it didn't uh, come off. It, it smeared a little, but, and then also the, the Papermate flares. So let's try these two. I forgot to do that earlier. The, I like the Papermate flare pens. They're really nice for this. Now, I haven't thrown them into a water test, but since before I knew about water tests, I've been using these to address envelopes. And as far as I know, my envelopes have gotten there. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. It probably saturated that envelope in good shape too. Yeah, it's kind of a, a bleeder of an envelope, but still. Okay, and this is the Mach 3, the Korean pen uh, Mach three morning glory. I do like to have one envelope for each envelope I have, if at all possible, where I test things out because I really don't like surprises when I get around to actually um, addressing the envelopes. And that looks pretty good. It's an awful thin line width, but it's a zero, 0 0.38, whoops. 
I don't even know if you could see that. I do like this pen. I'm using one in my bullet journal and I just love it. Okay, and then the, let's see, we'll, we'll try the Pilot G2. I knew this was gonna become a, <laughs> it's more like we're here together actually. Pilot G2, should have you all bring over your envelopes and we could have an envelope trading party. That would be so much fun because some of these I'd love to get rid of, but I will be using as many of them as I can that are appropriate for what I'm sending. So that's pretty good. I'd probably have to do some kind of water test. Actually, I have a sprayer. This is my creative room where the cat doesn't belong. So let's see if we can, let's see what happens. I mean, why not? You only live once. Let's see. We'll just spray that a little and then we'll continue and then we'll come back. <clears throat> you know, that's pretty much what happens if a mail carrier is carrying it. But we'll look back at this after we look at some more envelopes. So the 15 cent envelopes, what I did find out with these, um, the size is just fine. It, it's quite appropriate for folding a, a regular piece of paper or you can take your Tamoy River paper and fold it the other way, of course. Um, I have a friend who does that with the number 10 envelopes, but our, his envelopes are really high quality. But see, you could still do that with an A5 Tamoy River. Um, and that was a good buy, but I don't like that everything kind of shows through. Let's see if we can get a, I don't know if it'll demonstrate or not, but I felt like everything kind of showed through. Yeah, everything just shows right through. And it's, it's not gonna do that for you as well with the bright white light above, but for me, I'm picky about that, so. But I'm using these, these have come in pretty handy. And that was, you know, it was pocket change to get 30 cents worth of nice feeling envelopes anyway. Okay, what's next? Probably the oddest balls of all, let's see. Okay, these next ones are A7 size. They're very sturdy. They're about a five by seven size. Let's see if I'm telling the truth because that doesn't sound right. Maybe that you can fit something that's five by seven. Yeah, it's almost seven and a quarter by five and a quarter. So A7 size is what it turned out to be. I found these on clearance at Tuesday morning. Uh, it was a, a wicked deal. And I thought, well, I might as well get these. They're very sturdy. And I like them for my overseas pen pals because I feel like the letter is going to stay together. I mean, some of my letters are going to Greece, Poland, uh, Australia. They're going a long ways away. And I just feel funny about some of the thinner envelopes. I, I see how they come in to me. And so I'm wondering, well, mine are going to get beat up. So these have been good. The only thing is, I don't know if you can see that, how it they packaged them up, they repackaged them. So I was a little fooled that some of them were sort of uh, wrinkled, but that's not too bad and most of them have been good. So I've still got a few of those to use. And that, you know, again, it's a little bit odd. My letters get folded kind of funny. Uh, I'm really challenged with folding letters, but it was so funny because one time <laughs> I mentioned that to a pen pal. So the next pen pal letter came folded up, really folded up. And, and he made the point that it doesn't matter how you fold your letter. It's the letter that counts. And I was laughing. I thought, oh, I get so hung up on things that don't, <laughs> don't really matter. So that was funny. And you know who you are. I'm not going to give you away. <laughs> okay. So then I've got some really super oddballs. Um, the coin envelopes are not for mailing. They're too small to mail, but they might hold like a, a little something, which I hadn't really thought of. But if I, if I do a washi sample that I might want to send to somebody, it might kind of keep it from acting up. It might keep it where I want it in the letter. So I had these all bound up to donate them. And then I realized, you know, I think I can use these. At one time, there were 500 of these. I know I halved it in half with somebody, so I, it, I didn't keep them all. I knew I couldn't use them all. And then the same quality, so this is a number one envelope, coin envelope. Back when I was exchanging quarters with my dad, when we had the, the US, the United States had uh, different quarters coming out, he and I used to send, uh, he would send me the Philadelphia and I would send him the Denver. 
because we were both trying to get all of them collected. That was so, that was really a lot of fun actually. And then these here, they appear to be number eight size, but let's see. They're pretty close to it. I think they're number eight size. Uh, what I had these for, and this is all that's left, was cash envelope system when, when I was doing even groceries with cash. I don't do that anymore, but uh, they're here to use up and maybe even to put inside a bigger, if I want to keep some stickers uh, safe. But actually, I, I like that really flimsy stuff you get at the post office for that. Okay, we're getting down to the bottom here. Uh, these I really dislike. I don't, I didn't even check to see what size they were. That's how bad. They, they don't seem to, well, maybe they're the same size as those brown ones. Oh my, yeah, they are. Okay. Okay. So they are an A2, but they're extremely thin. And I only bought these for, I think it was 80 cents because they came with some sturdy, uh, Announce, no, uh, correspondence cards that came with them were really nice. I've used up all the correspondence cards. So this could be recycling or I could use them, but I don't like them. They're really, really, really thin. They're not going to go for my overseas pen pals. So, but you know, sometimes our opinion changes when we can't find anything else. So I'll, you know, I'll keep them for now. And then these envelopes are tiny little um, thank you card size. And I end up with tons of these because I use the thank you cards for little booklets that I make that end up looking like this. This is a booklet and it's a passport size. And uh, in a real, in a perfect world, they usually do fit nice and snug. So that's really nice. But I found another kind of envelope I like better for mailing these if I, when I make them. Um, so these envelopes I just tossed in to show you that we really have a lot more around our house usually than we think. So there's those. <laughs> okay, one last envelope, which leads me like to the exciting part of envelope making, which I'm very new at. So this is my favorite envelope for mailing. Uh, you can mail either a passport or a pocket size insert in these. And what I did was tear mine apart, not this one. It's what the log and jotter came in. And so this is the passport size, but it's like exactly a half inch taller it, or very close to it is the pocket size and that fits in here too. So this is my pattern. Um, I just took this apart and traced it and put it on cardstock. And this actually comes out really good when I use the, uh, this is a Martha Stewart, uh, kind of an envelope um, score thing. But I don't use this as much because I have a, a paper cutter now that scores that's just really easy to line up where this I find a little harder. Like sometimes I wanna even use a ruler in conjunction with this to try to keep my scores um, straight. I don't need to worry about that with my paper cutter that has one, one knob for scoring and one for cutting. So I do make these, I just haven't for a while. Um, this was made out of a Pancreatic Cancer Action Network card that they sent me and I made it as a like a sketch kind of booklet. Okay, so envelope making. I, ha I get a lot of um, envelopes that people make in pen pal letters and it's just really a lot of fun. The, the, I have just the simple things like the tape runner, the Elmer's tape runner, the a better score thing, and some uh, double-sided tape, which I won't be replacing because it's so expensive, but I, this works just as good, the tape runner. So making your envelopes is another um, option. It's just, I find it really time consuming, so I have to be super motivated. Like, usually it's because I want to send a booklet and then I want to make one just like this, so that's my specialty right now. And there's another envelope that a pen pal sends me that's, it's a little bigger than a, Number 10, let's see. So it's like, I, I was gonna pull it out, but I didn't wanna get into the whole nine yards. It's a little bit maybe deeper than a 10. And I think, um, I think I'm gonna try again to get a bit more square version of it for a template so I can try it. Cause I do have scrapbooking paper that I can use to, um, to make some envelopes like that. And I need to use that stuff up or get rid of it, so. 
So that's pretty much it, except for one more thing. <laughs> I need to push some of this aside. Okay, we'll just make an avalanche on the other side of the table. Good thing no cats come in here. Okay, that the last thing was just some of my pens that I tend to use to address envelopes, but I also want to hear from you guys because I feel like I'm really challenged with this envelope subject. Um, okay, this is the Twisby Go with a fine nib. Yeah, fine nib, Le uh, Noodler's Lexington Gray. That's a nice option for addressing envelopes. And then this is the Paper Mate Ink Joy. Uh, one millimeter, it's, you know, it's, it's a rather broad ballpoint pen, but I know the ballpoint pen is nice and water resistant. Oh, we got to check in on our experiment too. Um, and then this is the Mach 3 Morning Glory, which I'm not really sure about, so I haven't used it as much. I'm looking at it. It looks a little bit, uh, let's take a look at it. Yeah, it, it got a little bit smeared, but it didn't go away. The paper made actually didn't fare very well. But you could see the Lexington Gray, it feathered on that paper, but it really didn't move. The ballpoint pen came out best on this envelope. And I have no idea what kind of envelope it was. It was just 15 cents for 10 at the thrift store. <laughs> ah, they shouldn't let me inside thrift stores. Okay, uh, so those are the four that I tend to pick up to address envelopes, unless there was one time, once upon a time, I had Claire Fontaine envelopes, which were so nice, but they were so pricey. And I go through so many envelopes in a week. So I never repurchased, but those uh, Claire Fontaine Triumph envelopes were so nice. I could use almost any fountain pen and then either I would tape over or I would use the wax over so that it didn't get uh, either smeared or, you know, washed away like, like can happen with water, you know, because a lot of times I notice the mail that comes here does get wet. The, the mail carriers can't help that. So... Anyway, what do you think about envelopes and what are your favorites? Um, for me, I still, I still really like that one that I showed you. Oh my goodness, this is not, not cool. I buried it. This is probably my favorite size, the A6. And I like the pen and gear, but I prefer the pastels so that, you know, all your words don't show through. And then um, I still really, really love the small number eight. I, although I haven't used one in a while, I don't know if I'm getting fancy or what, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't know, but I really like it. It's very simple. And when I, I know what I'm going to use, my letter writing goes faster. So there's those two. And then um, I still use the number 10 and the five by seven um, craft envelopes for my mother quite often, like, because I, I tend to have to send her paperwork. So those are, those are really nice too. But I can see that I have a long ways to go before I should even contemplate purchasing envelopes. What about you? Do you have favorites? I'd love to hear about it. I've gone way over what I expected to time-wise, so I'm going to close now. But I hope you're having a great week. And I'll be back next week with a, a pen, ink, paper combination video. I, I ran into... Uh, the need to take a few mental health days this week. So that's what I'm doing. But every time I would start to think about a video this week, all I wanted to talk about was envelopes. So I said, well, why not? I can't be the only person interested in envelopes because a lot of us write letters and, and we need to use envelopes. So I hope you enjoyed it and I appreciate you all so much. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.